Hi, good afternoon. This is an introduction to uh, Dynamics Now Edition landing costs. What I've just opened, I've just opened up my uh, roll teller client in for the purchasing agent. I'm now going to create a purchase order. Open up the purchase order list, choose new. Enter in my vendor that I'm going to be used. So we're going to use London Postmaster. Fill out all the usual fields that you would do for a purchase order process. And we then move on to the lines. So I'm going into my first line, and what I'm going to be choosing is a test item that I've created. Now, this test item has been set up with a landing cost in the background, which will be covered later. Enter in a, a location, so we've got a yellow location, and then I'm going to enter in my quantity. What we can see straight away is if I go onto my line function. And then if I go into the expected charges, the background against this item, what I've got, I've got some duty set up and I've also got some freight set up as well. That, that set will be covered later. You can then move over to the right hand side or along the line and what we've also introduced is something called a container number. So obviously uh, you can then in, uh, receipt in different container numbers for that purchase order. So we're just gonna put in a sample container number. And that will be used when you actually flow through, uh, when you're actually receipted the purchase order and you go through to actually invoicing the duty and the freight charge. Again, just make sure you complete all the other details. So we're just going to put in our vendor order number and then we're going to release the actual purchase order. Okay, after releasing, you then go through the receipt process. So we're going to choose the Great Warehouse Receipt. Again, Enter in the typical details that you do on your warehouse receipts or standard NAV fields. Choose the username, uh, user ID if you do. Check that the correct quantity has been received. And all we're going to do is just post the warehouse receipt. Choose OK to that message. Okay, so we've received in the purchase order. What I'm just going to have a look now is on the item and the ledger entries and the value entries. So I'm just going to go on to the one that we've just received now. So for drill and entry inventory, and we choose the item that we received on today's date. Check onto the value entries. What we now can see is three value entries created, one for the material, one for the duty, and one for the freight, all at the cost amount expected. Escape out of that and go back onto our purchase order. So we've now received the invoice for the materials only. Uh, from the supplier. So all I'm going to do is just enter in a PO number and I'm going to post my invoice. Again we'll just have a look at the effect on the item and the actual value entries. So if we just open up our item list now as the purchase order is gone. Go onto the inventory, find the actual entry that we're looking at today and then onto the value entries. What we can now see we've got an additional value entry created purely for the material only. And it's now come out as cost amount actual. Close that down. So next step in the process is we're obviously waiting for the, the duty and the freight charges to come through from our suppliers. So once they come through, we will then go onto our expected cost worksheet. Open that up and what we will be presented with is maybe uh, container numbers or values from a previous uh, run. So all I'm gonna do is delete those entries. Again, it's just a worksheet. They will reappear if necessary. Choose a batch name. We can leave these details at the top blank at the moment until we actually start to process the invoice. So all I'm gonna do is calculate the charges. What this will do, it'll then look at all the purchase receipts that have been performed, and it will then look at the container numbers that we haven't actually processed in the invoice for and return them to the screen to be processed later. So the two that I've got here at the bottom, which we demonstrated earlier, so I have a duty charge and a freight charge. So what I'm gonna deal with is just this, the freight charge first. So I've received a freight charge for £2.50. Enter our value in there. It will then come through the invoice amounts, LCY, and you've got no variance.
So what I'm just going to do is hide or delete these entries that I don't need to see at the moment. Choose my vendor and we're going to process uh, the invoice for this vendor who is looking out for the freight charge. Enter in a vendor invoice number for them. Enter in the invoice amount and choose generate invoice. What that will do, it will then pass the charge item onto a purchasing invoice for this vendor. And as in standard nav, what we can see is if we go into the item charge assignment, we can then see this has been automatically assigned to that receipt that was performed earlier today. Choose OK. Check all the other details on the invoice to make sure that's correct. And then post the actual purchase invoice. Go back into the worksheet again. Calculate charges. What we're going to be looking at is now the duty charge. We can delete those lines there. We'll find our, let's say that our HMRC supplier. We're just going to use the same vendor again. Enter the details in there. Pull through the invoice amounts. If you enter a different amount, what it will do, it will show a variance coming through. But for this demonstration, we're just going to put in the full amount. Put in the invoice number. And then we're going to generate an invoice exactly like we did before. Again, let's reiterate, we can then go onto the item charge assignment and we can see that this charge has now been assigned to that receipt that we did earlier. Choose OK. Again, just check the details on the purchase invoice and then we go to post. So if we go back to our item now, open that up. Drill onto the item that we dealt with earlier today and then go onto the value entries. What we will now see is two further entries for the freight and the duty, changing the cost amount expected to the cost amount actual.